Hi there, I'm David from Hailbytes. In this setup video for GoFish, we'll be covering how to find GoFish on the AWS Marketplace, how to subscribe to the GoFish offer, how to launch your instance after you've subscribed, how to view your instance in the EC2 dashboard to get your instance ID and check health, how to check your security groups for admin console access, and how to connect to the admin console. We'll also be covering common questions around sending emails. That includes how to update your SMTP settings, how to remove email sending restrictions from your EC2 instance, and how to set up your own SMTP server with Amazon SES if you don't have one. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and search for GoFish in the AWS Marketplace. You'll see our listing comes up as the first result, and you just click Continue to Subscribe to accept and begin the offer. You can accept the terms here, and it bills at 50 cents per hour, or if you decide that you wanna save money and get a annual subscription, you can go ahead and get the annual contract instead for an 18% savings. So you go ahead, you accept the subscription. Fantastic. So this would be the page where you'd be able to configure a contract if you wanted to get a longer term. Um, for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of proof of concepts and smaller usage, often hourly is a better way to go. It's an easier way to set it up, spin it up, take it down. Um, that said, if you're scaling up services, you're trying to offer a lot of um, phishing campaigns simultaneously, you want many analysts logging into a dashboard, on a recurring basis over a longer period of time, it can make a lot of sense for your business to get one of those annual contracts and save that 18%. So once you've successfully subscribed to the software, we can go ahead and continue to configuration. From the configuration tab, most of these can stay the same. You can change the region to a data center that's closer to you or where you'll be running your simulations. And again, there's an, a prompt for uh, annual savings. What we'll go ahead and do is continue to launch can review the usage instructions and then we'll go ahead and launch from website now when launching from website it's very important to note if you do not have a default VPC that has DNS host names assignment and a subnet that has IPv4 assignment you'll want to go ahead and enable those settings they are critical for both the DNS routing as well as for the certificate generation so we'll go ahead and create these from scratch real quick just for the purposes of this demo. So we'd go and create a VPC, create VPC, go fish default VPC, say VPC only. We'll do a CIDR like 172.15.0.0 WAC24, give us a little bit of network space to work with, and we will go ahead and create this VPC. So now that we have this VPC, we're going to want to go ahead and edit VPC settings and enable DNS host names. Then we can save and we will go back to our configuration page and we're going to create a subnet to associate with that VPC. So first things first, VPC-09, we'll go ahead and update this. And there are no subnets here, so we're going to go ahead and create a subnet in EC2. We'll go create subnet, select that VPC-09 again, and this will be GoFish default subnet. And same for this, it's going to be a subset of that. Uh, so we'll say 172.15.0.0 WAC24, just use the entire block. And we'll go ahead and create subnet. So for this, we now need to go into the subnet, we'll edit the subnet settings and will enable the auto assignment of public IPv4 addresses. This is very important um, for your instance to be able to be accessible, to be able to have certificates generated. So you've created your VPC, you've created your subnet. Now we'll want to make sure that it is able to access the public internet. So we'll go to internet gateways. We'll make sure that we've created an internet gateway called gofish-default-internet-gateway and then we'll go ahead and attach to the VPC that we created originally, the GoFish default VPC. We'll go ahead and we'll go to our route table and we'll make sure that the route table that's associated with that subnet and with that VPC has a route to the internet gateway. 
and then we'll go ahead and save our changes. So now we have a VPC for GoFish, a subnet for GoFish, a route table attached to that subnet, and an internet gateway that allows for instances inside of that subnet to reach outside of the VPC and reach out to the public internet. If you have a default VPC that already has these enabled, then this is not necessary for you to do. You can simply launch GoFish inside of that VPC, inside of that subnet. We will also go ahead and create a new security group based on seller settings, and we'll say GoFish default security group. GoFish default security group. And then we can go ahead and save that and we'll change it to a key pair that we're happy with using. You'll likely want to generate a new key pair for this. And then we'll go ahead and launch. Now we'll be able to view the details for the EC2 instance in the EC2 console. So let's head over there. Here we can see the new instance has launched. It's in a pending state. So it's just come up, it's running, and it's gonna take it a few minutes to go from running. We'll see initializing for status checks before long, and then it'll show two of two status checks passed, and that's when we'll know that we're able to uh, route to the server and access it. So in the meantime, we can go ahead and rename this to something like go fish, phishing simulation server, and now we'll just be waiting a little bit for the status checks to come back green. And then you'll be able to visit the instance ID HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the instance ID dot colon 3636. And that will direct you to slash login. You'll be able to log in using admin and then the instance ID. Now, once you're in the dashboard, typically what you'll want to do is modify your campaigns. Campaigns can be copied in this way, or you can create new campaigns. A campaign constitutes uh, a collection of users, so the group of users that you'd like to send to, and you can export from uh, Active Directory, or you can upload a CSV of these users if you're using very large lists of users to make things a little bit easier. Uh, it'll be a campaign that has a list of users, the email template that you want to use, and the landing page that you want associated with that. Now, there are a bunch of email templates that you can choose from, 35 different email templates, uh, five different landing pages that you can choose from, and then there are also sending profiles for uh, common uh, SMTP providers. Now, if you don't have an SMTP provider, uh, an SMTP server of your own, AWS SES is probably one of the smoothest ways to get into uh, sending emails transactionally for the purposes of these phishing simulations. And what you can do is, I'll go ahead and attach this document, how to use Amazon Simple Email Service for GoFish in 2023. Uh, and it'll walk you through creating the creds, getting verified, um, requesting the removal of some restrictions, and then actually being able to connect to that using these connection details inside of your sending profile here. The last piece that people often uh, like is the reporting settings. So setting up the IMAP account, uh, this will allow users to forward to this uh, email account and give you additional reporting information in terms of how many users report, not just open, not just click, but also report the phishing simulations that you send out. When you want to add new users, um, other analysts or other administrators to manage your dashboard, that can be done under user management here. And then when you're ready to get sending, you'll want to go ahead and set up the sending profile, likely with Amazon Simple Email Service. Um, you'll also want to request a removal of the restriction on port 25 from your Amazon EC2 instance. And so this goes hand in hand with that Amazon Simple Email Service. If you're not using Amazon Simple Email Service, but you want to use another SMTP provider, you'll still need to do this for any Amazon EC2 instance where you want to send mail over port 25. So I'll also attach this, uh, and you'll be able to refer to that in the, uh, in the setup. All right, I think that covers just about everything you would need to get started. So then when you're ready, you would go new campaign, you pick your template that you wanna send, you pick your landing page that you wanna send to, and then this should be the location of the target for this server. So this would be http.hbg. Uh, 
gpsim.com uh, colon and then no colon and this would be open on port 80. You select your sending profile and then you select the group of users that you want to send to schedule the time uh, if you have a time in mind name your campaign go fish default campaign and then launch campaign and you're good to go you'll receive the reports here in the dashboard you can click on view results and then as those results come in you'll be able to export a csv either raw results or raw or the results or raw events um, as well as setting your engagement to complete and shutting down those landing pages and uh, email templates once you are finished with your engagement. Fantastic. So if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at hailbytes.com um, and we'll help you get set up in testing.